Okay, so so far in this series, we have only seen the data engineering aspect of Apache Spark. But in this lecture, let's make it very interesting and learn about how we can implement machine learning solution using Apache Spark. So in this lecture, let's talk about the MLLib library and how we can implement it in our examples. So without further any ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the previous lecture was all about building a reliable data lake for your Apache Spark. So this lecture, let's start talking about machine learning and how we can build ML models using Apache Spa. So this will be really fun. So I hope you'll enjoy these lectures. So let's get started. So until this, we only focused on like a data engineering part of the Apache Spa, where we have seen how we can design workloads with Apache Spark and it is often like a precursory step for preparing your data for machine learning pipelines. So which will be like the focus for our upcoming videos. So in this day and age of machine learning and the artificial intelligence, these applications are like an integral part of our lives. So the higher chances will be like whether we realize it or not, every day we come into contact with machine learning models for purposes such as like online shopping recommendations so when you visit amazon website those websites will give you like product recommendation which you will really like by seeing your purchasing histories and all other stuff and ml model will give you those recommendation as well as it also utilize in the advertisement fraud detection as well as the image recognition pattern matching and so on so these ml models will drive very important business decisions for many companies and according to the survey which is very interesting so this survey was done by mckenzie and company so 35 percent of what consumer will purchase on a major platform which is like amazon is driven by machine learning best product recommendation as well as like 75 percent of the content which you watch on netflix is also driven by this approach where machine learning pipelines will decide and will give us like the product recommendation so that it will be easier for you to choose the products or some episode you may like on Netflix. So that was pretty interesting. So in this videos, now we will get started with building ML models using MLlib library. So this is like a machine learning library in Apache Spark. But first we have to understand what is machine learning and their features and in the next lecture we can directly get started creating our machine learning models. So first let's focus on what is machine learning. So this machine learning term is getting very hype these days. But what it is exactly? So in broadly speaking like machine learning is nothing but a process for extracting some patterns from your data and we will utilize like the statistics linear algebra and the numerical optimizations so a machine learning can be like applied to some problems such as like predicting power consumption as well as determining whether there is a talk or not in your video or like clustering items with similar characteristic so if we have like a species of different flowers and you want to cluster them and study about the flowers and their similarities then in that case machine learning will come into picture but there are like some few types of machine learning so these are like supervised machine learning also we have semi supervised unsupervised and the reinforcement learning so in this series let's only focus on the supervised learning and we'll just touch up on the unsupervised learning as well because these are like most important nowadays but before we dive in, let's briefly discuss about some of the differences between supervised as well as unsupervised machine learning. Okay, so let's talk about what is supervised learning. So in supervised learning, your data will consist of a set of input records and each of these are associated with labels. The end ultimate end goal is for predicting the output label which is given to the unlabeled input that you have to understand very clearly so let's say if you have like different pictures of fruits so that the first thing you have to do is you have to label each picture so for apples you have to provide the label apples bananas and so on so as you can see in this figure the first thing will be you have to train your data and you have to use the labeling for your pictures and our end goal will be the machine learning model should predict the output label which is given to the unlabeled input so after that when you input 
the unlabeled pictures it will definitely gonna predict if the fruit in this picture is apple or bananas or so on so that is the end goal of the supervised learning where you have to make an effort for labeling the pictures or records to train your machine learning model and that will give you the prediction score so these output labels can be either discrete or continuous so which brings us to the two types of supervised machine learning which is like classification as well as the regression so in the classification model the ultimate goal is to separate the inputs into discrete set of classes or labels and with the binary classification there will be two discrete labels you want to predict so for example it should be like a dog or not a dog for example so with multi classes also known as the multinomial there can be like three or more discrete labels such as like predicting the certain type of breed of a dog so in the regression problems the value to predict is like a continuous number and it is not a label which we have seen in the classification model so this means that you might predict values that your model hasn't even seen during the training so as shown in this right figure if you have to build like a model for predicting the daily ice cream sales and the input would be like the temperature so in this case as the temperature increases the daily ice cream sales are getting increases that's the trend but your model might predict a value something like 79.9 even if none of the input or output pairs it was trained on will contain that value so that you have to understand so there are some list of commonly used supervised machine learning algorithms that are available in the spark ml lib and they can be used for both regression classification or they can be used only for certain type of supervised learning so we have like linear regression which is only used for regression we have the logistic regression which is only used for classification then we have like the decision trees gradient boosted trees as well as the random forest which can be used for both classification and the regression and we also have naive bias and the support vector machine which is only used for the classification machine learning model so this was all about the supervised learning you should have a label data you have to train your machine learning model and the model will predict the label or else some value if you are using like a regression model to predict the unlabeled data so that was all about the supervised learning now let's talk about what is unsupervised learning so obtaining this label data which is required by the supervised machine learning can be very expensive and sometimes it could be like in feasible way so this is where this unsupervised machine learning will come into picture so instead of predicting a label this unsupervised machine learning will help you better understand the structure of your data so for example let's say we have like unclustered data on the left hand side of this figure so there is no known true label for each of these data points but by applying like the unsupervised machine learning to our data we can find the clusters that are naturally form which we can see on the right hand side of the figure where like this data is coupled together as a community as a part of the cluster so this unsupervised machine learning can be used for outlier detection or as pre processing step for supervised machine learning so it is can it can be used for like reducing the dimensionality of the data set which is useful for reducing storage requirements or like simplifying the downstream task so some unsupervised machine learnings are like k means as well as LDA and the Gaussian mixture models this was all about the unsupervised learning but wait a minute why we are using spark for machine learning right there are so many tools out there so why we should prefer only apache spark that we will discuss now so i hope you already know that spark is like a unified analytics engine which will provide an ecosystem for ingesting data as well as feature engineering as well as training the model and the deployment so without spark developers would need many disparate tools for accomplishing this set of task and it will and they will might struggle with this scalability as well so why should you go for this hassle if you have everything in apache spark right so spark generally has like two machine learning packages the one is spark.mllib and the second one is like the spark ml 
So the Spark ML Lib is like a original machine learning API and it was based on the RDD API. But it is in like a maintenance mode since Apache Spark 2.0 but we have like the spark.ml which is like a newer API more enhanced one and it is based on the data frame API. So nowadays everyone is migrated from the RDD API to the data frames API because of their benefits and it could integrate with different languages like Python R. So that's why spark.ml will make more sense here. So the upcoming lectures we are going to focus using the spark.ml package and how we can design the machine learning pipeline in Spark. But however, I am going to mention it as a MLlib library only. So don't get confused. So with the Spark.ml, the data scientists can use one ecosystem for their data preparation as well as the model building without the need to downsample their data for fitting on a single machine. So that, that's why Spark is a great tool for building your machine learning models. So this was about like a basic, very basic and theoretical part of what is machine learning, what are different types of machine learnings, where we seen like supervised, unsupervised learning and which is preferable for which application as well as we have discussed why we are using only Spark for building these machine learning models. So enough talking. Now in the next lecture, let's design our machine learning pipeline so that you will get a better understanding and a good grip on this machine learning part. So I'll see you in the next lecture. I hope you like this lecture. So please subscribe to our channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media which I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.